Good day, mates. Aaron Otombre here. You may remember me from season three of Ninja Warrior Australia. Although, probably not, because uh, I was only on the telly for a few seconds before my spectacular splash, but that was heaps and heaps of fun. Now, if you want to check out that video and have a giggle, click on the link below. Anyway, enough of that. It's not why I'm here today. I'm here today because I have decided to do a shoe review. That's right, reviewing a shoe. And I've got to be honest with you, I've never reviewed any products before by video, and I never imagined I'd be doing it for free. So, begs the question then, why am I doing this today? Well, simple answer is, I'm excited. I'm passionate, in fact, about this shoe, about the company that makes them, uh, general philosophy and concept behind the shoe, which I'll get into very shortly. But now, without further ado, let me introduce to you the shoe. This is the Hana. It's made by Zero Shoes. And it is a barefoot minimalist shoe. I'll explain what that is in just a second. Mine comes with uh, lots of cat hair. They normally don't come like that out of the box. This is a unique one. Now, what is a minimalist shoe? What's, what's the barefoot lifestyle? What's all that about? I'm going to cover it off really briefly because I'm not the best at doing that. This is how the review will work. I'll cover the basics of the barefoot lifestyle off and minimalist footwear. Then I'm going to dive into the specifics about this shoe in particular, the Hana. I'm going to cover off the three main concerns I had before buying it. And uh, that will be it. So if you've, you've already learnt about the barefoot lifestyle, the benefits of being barefoot minimalist footwear, and you want to jump right into the specifics about the Hana, just uh, click down below or jump to wherever. I'll, I'll put it up. Um, otherwise, stay tuned. I'll really quickly zip over the basics. But firstly, um, I'm just going to talk about my initial inspiration for this. So, it happened um, when I first did Ninja Warrior, um, and I heard of another ninja uh, during that process. I'd heard about him before, but he's an absolute legend, top bloke, Barefoot Dan. So that uh, he, he's what initially got me intrigued into the barefoot lifestyle. And uh, recently I saw a Facebook video by Stephen Sushin, the founder of Zero Shoes, which... Um, further stimulated my interest in barefoot running and having a barefoot lifestyle and got me doing more research and eventually led to me getting my first pair of minimalist shoes right here. So that was the initial inspiration. Uh, really quickly, the main points about it. Um, so your feet are pretty bloody awesome at what they are. They're naturally designed to carry you, carry your body, um, move, run around, jump, whatever. And uh, to do this, they need to bend, flex, twist, splay out, do whatever feet naturally do. And feet should always be allowed to do this. How do we achieve this? Well, the simplest way is to be barefoot all the time. Get that you can't always do that. When you can't, you should be in minimalist footwear because standard shoes just don't allow you to do it. Minimalist shoes here, they will have quite a lot of bend, flex, super flexible as you can see, twist them whatever very easily, and it's important that your feet are allowed to do that. Regular shoes just don't afford you the same flexibility, you have to push a bit harder, and they all tend to bend or articulate at one specific point, which is actually not in line with where your foot would normally bend, it's not where that joint is, so that's, that's wrong essentially. When you put on a regular shoe and you prohibit what your foot naturally wants to do. Unfortunately, what that means is uh, body transfers those jobs of adapting uh, to changes into the ground into your ankles and your knees, which can cause problems with your ankles and your knees, such as sprains, blowouts, etc. If you just let your feet do what they need to do, then that allows the body, the rest of the body to do what it needs to do. And that's really the best way to go. So that's one point about um, being barefoot. Another point, think about your toes, okay? Toes, very important. Think about doing a push-up or a handstand or any kind of exercise where you want to support your body weight on your hands. Fingers are always splayed. They're spread out like that. Achieve much better support that way. Simple as that. With your toes, it's really no different. They want to do that naturally in a lot of cases and they should be allowed to do it. One awesome feature with uh, all Zero shoes and uh, most minimalist shoes out there, I believe, on the market is that they have a wide toe box. So this is the toe box, that part of the shoe. 
because it's wide, it allows your toes to spread out uh, when they want to, as they need to. When you stuff your foot into a regular kind of shoe, you're just not afforded that same amount of uh, flexibility and freedom for your toes. They're kind of going to be squished in there, not allowed to move the way that they should be moving, and it's no good. Another thing you'll notice about Zero Shoes is that the shoes are actually shaped like a foot. And that's really how shoes should be shaped, not the other way around. You shouldn't be adapting your feet to fit into shoes and you know end up with pretty yuck shoe-like looking feet. Shoes need to be designed for your feet. Simple as that. Another really important point, being barefoot, um, is ground feedback. Your feet have got um, the most nerve endings more than any other part of your body except for your hands and your lips. And there's a reason for that, it's by design. Your feet are supposed to take feedback from the ground, uh, send that to your brain, the rest of your body, and then the rest of your body can move accordingly. It's natural and it's the way it's supposed to happen. Regular shoes unfortunately don't allow for much of that feedback because they're just too thick. Thick soles, more stuff between your feet and the ground, less feeling. Most minimalist shoes, all zero shoes, have very thin soles. That means that your feet are allowed to feel the ground and provide the feedback um, that is needed. So simple as that really on the feedback front. Uh, another thing worth noting is um, cushioning. So a lot of other lot of standard traditional shoes have a lot of cushion. And that's actually not good because when you think about it, if you wanted to jump really high from somewhere, you want to do it from a solid surface hard ground. You don't want to do it from, say, a mattress, because that absorption, that cushioning actually makes the movement less efficient. And it's no different with cushioning from your shoes. It actually absorbs some of the force that you want to push into the ground to push off when you run or jump or whatever. So that's another benefit of um, being barefoot or wearing minimalist shoes. Uh, you've got no, no cushioning and you don't have any reduced efficiency. You don't actually need cushioning for shock absorption. You're, um, body can do that naturally anyway on its own. There's plenty of muscles in the feet for that. It's your ankles. So cushioning not actually required. What else? All right, zero drop. If you start doing some research into minimalist footwear, it's probably a term you'll hear a lot of, zero drop. What does it mean? Very simply, it means that from the heel to the toe for the whole length of the, of the shoe, there is no height differential, okay? There's no change in height or sole thickness. It's the same all the way across, it means your foot is allowed to be flat when it's in the shoe, just as it would be flat on the ground. Most other shoes have uh, jacked up heels. Heels are a little bit higher than, uh, than the toe, so it means that your foot is not flat, it's actually at an angle, which isn't really good. Confer the rest of your posture out of whack. Think about high heel shoes. It's essentially the same concepts, just obviously on a much smaller scale in, in a regular shoe than compared to a high heel. But still not ideal for your feet. Should be flat as they are designed. Arches, let's talk about arches. I love arches, bit of a passionate topic for me because um, I'm an engineer. Um, so I love arches, they're a great structure. Uh, humans have known this for centuries and it's why arches are used everywhere. They're so fundamental. Uh, the Romans built a shitload of arches and structures with arches everywhere. They did it for a reason, because arches are extremely strong. They can take a lot of load and force from the top. Haven't got an arch handy, but here's a banana. Handy demonstration. You can put shitloads of force on an arch from the top. No worries, it'll hold up fine. If you want to collapse or destroy an arch, very simple. Just apply a little bit of upward force to the underside and it will collapse, it will fall to pieces. Trust me, I'm an engineer. It's a little in-joke there for my uni mates, hopefully they have a giggle. Um, with your feet, it's no different, okay? There's three arches in your feet and uh, they're there for a reason. They've got a purpose. They're designed to support your body and they're very good at doing that. When you support them by wearing traditional shoes with arch support, it actually weakens your feet over time. So arch support, no good. You're supposed to let the arches be natural arches. And so zero shoes, no arch support. It's like a flat, 
flat sole. It's the way it should be. And that's, you know, when you're barefoot, you've got nothing under your arches, it's the way it is supposed to be. So those are the basics of being barefoot, barefoot lifestyle. You may be thinking at this point, well, oh, geez, barefoot sounds so great, why wear shoes at all? Totally agree. I reckon barefoot is the way to go, it is better. But there are times when you may want to wear shoes um, for protection against sharp things like glass, etc. Society, you know, <laughs> deems it um, inappropriate to walk around and go about your day with no shoes on. Uh, workplaces, oh, h and I know my oh h &S department would have an absolute fit if I, um, if I just rocked up with no shoes one day. Although it would be quite fun, come to think of it now. I reckon my manager would be cool with it. He's a top bloke. Uh, anyway. Enough of that, into the specifics now about the Hana. So, here it is, Hana. It's a casual shoe. It's designed to be casual, everyday kind of shoe, slip on, slip off. It's what I'll be using it for. It's going to be my new shoe for the office, for work, for getting to the shops, etc. Uh, my three main concerns that I did have with it before buying it, uh, we'll cover those off now. They were laces, um, the canvas material, and water. So I'll go into those a bit more depth now. First of all, laces. When I looked online, um, quite often photos of the shoe look like there's no laces on the top. It seems more slip on, slip off. But then photos of people wearing them always have the laces. So it got me thinking, what's to do with the laces? Uh, luckily, I reached out to an awesome community of zero shoes enthusiasts and they cleared that right up for me. I'll clear it up for you now. So there are laces. They come with laces pretty much like this um, out of the box, not tied up obviously. Uh, you do need to tie them up, but just once, right? So take them out of the box, pop them on, tie them up, that's it. From then on you can just slip them on, slip them off, just like a casual shoe. It's also worth pointing out, and this is a feature of all Zero Shoes, or most Zero Shoes I believe actually, uh, they have a Huarachi, I guess a heel lacing system you'd call it, so it's basically a strap that runs down around the heel, down again, back up, and um, it's, it's joined onto the main lacing system, so when you lace them up, it actually provides a bit of tension and support for your heel, so it locks your heel into the shoe. Really, really handy, great feature. My other concern was canvas. I've actually never worn a canvas shoe in my life before. Had no idea about canvas, um, what it was like, so did a bit of research into that. My main concern was that it was not gonna be breathable. Um, some other zero shoe wearers have told me that that's not the case and it's, it's okay. They're not overly breathable, um, but that's not been an issue for most people and I've not had that issue at all so far. Um, I actually wear mine barefoot as well, so I just put my foot in and um, out, don't wear any socks. It's another really cool feature with all zero shoes. You actually, they're designed to be worn with or without socks, so it's totally up to you. It's entirely your choice. Oh, another thing, these come with little insoles. I'll just show you one right now. So, they come with these insoles. They're optional, you know, you can wear them if you want. But uh, for me, oh, not my cup of tea. I tend to dive right into things when I do something, when I start anything new. I jump right in the deep end, so I'm jumping right into the barefoot lifestyle. I'm trying to be barefoot most of the time. When I do have to wear shoes, I'll be wearing these, and I'll be wearing them barefoot. Makes the most sense. Uh, the only other concern I had with these was getting wet. Uh, they are not waterproof. They do have, I believe, a little moisture wicking liner, but they are not completely waterproof, but they're not going to fall apart. I reached out to some Zero shoe wearers who have this shoe and they confirmed that they're not going to fall apart. They're quite durable. Um, when you wear them in the rain, you just get wet feet, basically. No different than if you're barefoot. But uh, they will hold up, they're quite durable. And another really cool thing about these is they're machine washable. So you just chuck them in the machine, wash them. Simple as that. Got to love a little bit of simplicity. Um, anyway, that's about it. Uh, if you've watched on this far, thank you so, so much for watching. I've taken a lot more time than I initially anticipated. So apologies for that. And thank you if you've been with me for this time. One final thing I want to say before I sign off is feel the freedom. Feel the fun and feel the world. Thanks for watching everybody. Oh, if you want to get yourself a pair of Zero Shoes, just uh, click on the link below, head to their website. They've got an awesome range. And yeah, check them out. They've also got some performance shoes, which I'll definitely be getting a pair of for my next uh, athletic event, whatever that may be, a Spartan race, a Tough Mud or whatever. So uh, yeah, check them out. And uh, I hope if you're not 
outwardly convinced right away that barefoot is the way to go. I hope this has at least stimulated your mind a little bit and maybe made you think about researching into it a bit more and learning more about the barefoot ways. So thanks everybody. Arrivederci. Ciao.